This episode is kind of a review of the animated movie Inside Out, which is all about emotions. Given that the second Inside Out movie is currently in the cinema, I thought I finally had to watch the first one. And I will share with you my five takeaways from the movie and good reasons for you to watch it too. Let's get started. I finally got to watch the movie Inside Out this weekend. Yay! <laughs> I know, I know. How can it be that I never watched this movie, given how much I love to talk about emotions? But hey, I finally made it. And as you can imagine, I love it. If you don't know what movie I'm talking about, Inside Out is an animated Pixar movie about an 11-year-old girl named Riley. Riley and her parents end up moving from her hometown in Minnesota, where she grew up with happy memories of ice hockey, silly jokes with her dad and fun times with friends, to San Francisco. Though at first Riley tries to make the best of a hard situation, she soon's beginning to miss her Minnesota home. School is hard, the house that they're living in now is not as nice, and she feels her parents don't understand her struggles. But the movie is not so much about Riley, the character, as it is about her individual emotions. There are five of them. Joy, sadness, fear, anger, and disgust. Each emotion is its own separate character. Joy is a glowing, sparkly, fairy-like cheerleader oozing positivity and optimism. And then there is the short and frumpy looking sadness, which is your typical Debbie Downer, mopey, teary and lethargic. Anger is like a stocky, square, fire-breathing ball of irritation. And the wide-eyed fear is always trembling and biting its nails. And then we have the green-bodied disgust, which is quick to cross her arms and wrinkle her nose anytime she encounters something repelling. I can only recommend watching this movie with your children or even by yourself. It's a fantastic representation of how emotions are created, how personalities are formed during our childhood, and how easy it is to mismanage our emotions, especially the ones that we call negative. So let me share with you my personal five takeaways from the movie Inside Out. Takeaway number one, all emotions have purpose. I like that all five emotions starring in the movie get explained to have their own purpose. All of them get explained pretty quickly at the beginning what their purpose is. And then for sadness, this is part of the storyline to find out how sadness has a valuable purpose, which you then find out towards the end of the movie. It teaches kids and adults, too, that there is a value in purpose in all emotions. The mix of emotions we experience makes life so much more interesting. And that is shown at the end of the movie where experiences start to have various emotions inside of it and generate it. I talked about this in last week's episode, how important it is that we feel the full range of emotions and don't shy away from the ones we call negative. That's what creates a lot of issues in our lives. All emotions have their purpose and are valid to be felt in different situations in our lives. But by suppressing or escaping certain emotions like anger or fear, we get ourselves into trouble. So the first takeaway is that all emotions have a reason to be part of our human experience. Takeaway number two, childhood memories form our personality. The movie describes so well how a personality is created when we are young. It uses the idea of core memories that are so strong and impactful that they end up becoming a personality trait. One of the examples for Riley is ice skating. Riley has fond memories of ice skating with her parents when she was very, very young. And as they kept up this activity as a family, they kept it alive as part of her childhood. So she even ended up choosing ice hockey as her hobby. In Riley's case, initially, all of her core memories that made up her personality were all positive linked to the emotion of joy, like ice skating, spending time with family and friends, and making jokes with her dad. 
But if you take this idea further, you can imagine how a less joyful memory in a child's upbringing can become a personality trait that we might then struggle with later in life. An example could be a young girl observing her mom struggling with her weight and restricting her diet. If this girl observes this for a while ongoing, it can become a core memory and part of her personality, which can then turn into all kinds of weight and eating issues later in life. Another example could be a boy whose dad is traveling a lot for work. And because the boy misses his dad, he creates this core memory of his dad leaving all the time. And the feeling of that memory would be sadness or maybe even abandonment. And if that is part of his personality, that can have an influence on his relationships later in life. So takeaway number two is that childhood memories with strong emotions form our personality. And if we come across something in our lives that we would like to change, it helps to discover where this might come from or what is blocking us, which could be a core memory from our childhood and the reason why we struggle to change. Linking it back to such a core memory as described in the movie helps us to see it from maybe a new perspective or to release it even so it doesn't hold us back anymore. Takeaway number three, joy is important for our overall well-being. When Riley in the movie was born, her first emotion was joy. And Joy, the character, stays as well the unspoken leader of the emotions throughout the whole movie. And yes, we said in takeaway number one how all emotions have their purpose, but the movie shows us well what happens when there is just no joy anymore in our life. It's when Riley goes through a hard time because of the move to San Francisco that the emotions characters anger and fear start to overpower joy. And when Joy is then on her adventure in the movie and not even present anymore, Riley falls more and more into a depressed-like state where she starts to feel nothing anymore. And I think that this is something that most of us can relate to. I remember when I was burned out that nothing brought me joy anymore. I could go out with friends, go to the movies or be on holiday. And yes, I would enjoy some of it, but it was like a dampened way of feeling joy. It was not true joy that you might remember from your childhood. The thing is that we should still all feel such joy at times, exactly as we did when we were kids. And if you don't, then this is a sign to work on your emotional well-being and bring it back into balance. The thing is that we should all still feel this kind of joy at times, exactly as we did when we were kids. And if we don't, then this is a sign to work on your emotional well-being and bring it back into balance. For years, I was out of balance and hardly anything brought me joy anymore. And now that I left this time behind and I look after my emotional balance, I can feel pure joy again in the smallest things. So takeaway number three is that Feeling actual joy is important for our overall well-being. And if you don't, then this is a sign for you to improve your emotional state of being. And you know where to find me if you need a little bit of help with that. Takeaway number four, unvalidated feelings create problems. <laughs> and this is shown so beautifully through the character and emotion of sadness in the movie. Throughout most of the movie, sadness is always pushed to the side by the other emotions and classified as dangerous or useless or unwanted. And as you can imagine, that creates a lot of problems because sadness is then cr suddenly creating one disaster after the other. But the reason is that sadness is not validated as a purposeful emotion. It's cast aside and classified as wrong, as if there is no use for sadness in our human experience, which there is. And that is being discovered later on in the movie. And in the end, sadness is actually the hero of the movie once the other emotions realize its value and purpose. There is even a scene where Riley's mom asks her to keep smiling, even if times are hard. So Riley feels like she can't show how sad she actually feels. 
if she would feel safe to show how sad she actually was feeling inside of her, all of the problems that followed could have been avoided. It shows how dangerous it is to stop humans from experiencing certain emotions and how we create a cascade of unwanted situations by resisting feeling certain emotions. So the fourth takeaway is that suppressing, denying and locking certain emotions away create huge problems later on. A healthy balance of all emotions results in a healthy human life. So validate all of your emotions for what they are, valid and purposeful. And takeaway number five, it's useful to understand your brain. I think this is probably my favorite takeaway or my favorite part of the movie, that it describes so well how our brain works, so even kids can start to understand it. Knowing how something works always means that we can do things better with it. And the same applies to the brain. If we know how our brain works, we can make it work better for us. This is something I would love every child to learn at school or even at home. Once you understand how memories get created, how short-term and long-term memories work, and the subconscious mind, the better we get to leverage all of the brain has to offer. That's why I focus a whole module inside Energy Academy on the conscious and subconscious mind, because it's just so important. I'm sure you actually get to learn a lot watching this movie as an adult, so don't shy away from it just because it's animated. The cool thing and amazing thing about Inside Out is that it teaches all of these lessons while still being fun and entertaining, all at the same time. It does it in a way that the entire family can understand. There's material in the film for adults, for teens and for little kids. And it never gets too corny for us adults or too complex for kids. It hits the right tone the entire way through, which is why it's a must see for almost any family, especially if you're going through any changes, large or small. Okay, that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this episode and will enjoy the movie if you have not watched it yet. It's worth it. And with that, I love you and leave you. Talk soon and bye-bye.